Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of How to Miro. In this episode, we'll take a look at tables in Miro. So, let's dive in. Right now, I have a blank Miro board, well at least a blank canvas at the moment. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to add tables. Um, tables for every reason is really useful to um, gain insight into data. Uh, you know, you can easily read contents from a table rather than from a paragraph. Uh, so it brings a lot of structure and organization to the uh, to the content that you're trying to present. Uh, so in Miro, what you would do is you click on the three dots and search for tables from this app. And then here you can configure what are the number of rows and columns you want. Now, don't worry, you don't have to uh, decide right away. You can, you know, click on three by three, for example, place it here on the Miro board. Let me zoom in there. Uh, and this gives you a uh, preset uh, tables and uh, well rows and columns. Now what you can do is you can start filling data inside this table. So to do that I can click on whichever column or cell I want and once I double click it I should be able to type something in. So you can say hello world. First spell that right. That, that's correct. So now the font size is quite small so I can uh, what I can do is I can select the entire table. Oops. I can select the entire table and increase the font size from here. So now that's much more readable. Um, and what I can do is I can keep clicking on different cells and you know type some content. Type content. I can keep doing that and I can keep filling it uh, in. So the the process is quite sim uh, similar. Now to add rows and columns, you can see that there's this huge plus button here. So this will, if I click on this, it will add a new column. And if I click on this, it will add a new row. So that's quite easy to do as well. Now, but, so this was adding a rows and columns to the ends of the table. But what if you wanted to add a row and column um, in the middle, in the middle of the table? And so to do that, what you do is you just bring your mouse over here and if I try to zoom in, you can see that there's a plus button here that shows up as you you move your mouse between these different cells. Uh, I can click on the plus button here and that basically brings me another column. And similar thing for the row as well, there's little plus buttons here, I can click that and a new row will appear. Now let's say if I have populated the contents of the table, everything is done, but then I realize that the columns, the order of the columns or rows in this case doesn't add up. So let me just put this content here. Right. Now let's say if the order does not line up. Uh, so now what would we do? To reorder the rows and columns, what you can do is you can basically select this column and click on these three dots here and then just drag it and similar thing for the row as well so I can always click these three dots that sort of selects the entire row or column which are uh, three dots you're clicking either horizontal or vertical and then you can basically reorder it and that's how easy it is to reorder stuff now similar to reordering you can also copy the contents of the entire cell. So you can control C and then just control V it uh, in any other place. So copy pasting also works. Now what also works is if I add images to the table. So I can click on an image that I have. So I have this image here. What I can do is once it loads I can take this image and place it in this in any of these cell and as you can see uh, as I'm placing it in the cell the cell sort of gets highlighted uh, and it sort of knows that I'm placing content inside the cell now the the great part about this is that when I move the table around the image goes with it and so I can move this table around and all of the content will go with it 
uh, so that was the general gist of the table itself uh, and now you can see that there's a few more things that you can do so if I click on the table I can see there's a few options here uh, these are these um, options you would have already seen in other videos like the border color the the fill color so I can always click on this and you know fill the background color of the table I can change the font text and style of the table and so on and so forth but I can also do um, you know the cell resizing option so it is set to auto by default you can keep it manual and then adjust all the cell sizes by a uh, cell size manually um, that's one option and then you have add column and add row option here as well when I click on these three dots over here I have a few more options so first of all I do have the same font based options so which is to change the font style and appearance of, of all the text in the in the in the cells I can also delete the entire column from here so there's this little trash icon that shows up and I can also change the color of individual columns and rows so that is available when I click on these three dots so it's only available there and of course you can add a column and add a row here as well so that will add a row and column wherever based on whatever you're clicking it will add it accordingly now there's this option here which is a bit different and that is called merge cells and so in tables that's one highly used feature that you would see in tables is to be the ability to merge cells so either you can merge a few cells all of them or you know it depends you can merge columns you can merge rows and so if I click on this what will happen is all of these cells get merged into the one column here uh, and this just becomes um, and all the content just disappears right so you can always control Z to bring it back uh, but that's something to be careful about now if I don't want the operation like merge uh, to appear on or to to take effect on the entire column or the entire row what I can do is I can manually select cells so I can click on this cell and then click on this one so oops there you go so it's it's quite similar to how you would sort of drag elements and select elements together in Miro it follows the same uh, it follows the same sort of keyboard and mouse shortcuts um, sometimes the element does move like you just seen um, but you can definitely select individual cells and then I can click on merge cells and the contents will be merged now when the contents are merged in a cell this in, and this doesn't matter whether it is rows or columns when we look at cells that have text the text is usually on the top left of the cell now we can change the alignment so if you wanted to align it in the center what we would do is select this option here alignment click center but now that's only horizontally center we also want it to be vertically center so we click on this again and click this option here which brings the content in the uh, vertical and horizontal center of the cell now of course this same option alignment option is available on single cells as well so I can do the same thing here and I can align text uh, in the horizontal and vertical center now of course if you don't want to do this per cell what you can do is you can select the entire table select the entire table and do the same for the entire table so that was just a quick sort of different scenarios that uh, shows you how to you know perform various operations on a table and perform it in various ways which might affect either the whole table uh, individual cells or individual rows and columns um, depending on your use case now what I've done is I have um, created another table that's in this board so let's take a look at that because that's more this I've just created right now that one has more contents in it so this that I've created is just a sample scorecard table and just for demonstration uh, just to show you what uh, you know a, a formatted table might look like now as you can see we 
I have used quite a few of the uh, quite a few of the concepts that I just spoke about. So that includes giving these you know in di different rows different background colors. Uh, and if I click on this or any of these cells, I can see that the opacity is set to ninety percent, whereas these cells are set to thirty percent. So I can give different cells different background colors. I have made these text bold so that becomes a table header uh, because by default there's no option to set a table header so you have to format it yourself uh, and then different all of these different cells have just different text elements uh, and I've also added images and that goes around with the table I have merged these cells and then all the other cells in the second row uh, sort of fits right underneath but that also means that I have merged the ID total and notes cells vertically uh, so actually this table contains two rows table header contains two rows the first one is obviously this one here and the second one is this one here and subjects is merged horizontally whereas ID total and notes cell is merged vertically across two cells and then of course uh, there's this little caption that you can double click and update so I can double click and update this and that gives you a little caption for the table as well so that was a quick demonstration of using tables in Miro uh, it was relatively easy but there's a lot of options to look at uh, there's a lot of elements there's a, there's a few pop-ups here and there that comes in and out depending on where you click um, and so I do agree and do understand if it will take a bit of practice to get familiarized with tables in Miro uh, so if you do find this video useful uh, let me know by giving it a thumbs up and maybe even adding some comments down below uh, and tell me what you thought about using tables in Miro and I hope this video was actually helpful in your learning process and uh, do subscribe to this YouTube channel so that you you can you know stay tuned for you know more videos that I'll be posting on this channel um, and do share this video with your friends maybe your family your network to whoever that this video might be useful so thanks for watching this video and I look forward to seeing you in another video in the future. See ya.